We're going to look at some different equations now. We know how to solve linear equations. We've also looked at quadratic equations. Those are equations with the x squared. Remember we said for those, you've got to put it equal to zero and factorize. Um, but now here are some other ones that we might be faced with and we can actually solve. So say we have something like 2x cubed is 250. To solve this one, I want to try and get that x cubed on its own. So I'm going to divide here by 2. So I must, of course, with equations, if I do that to one side, I must do it to the other. So I'll get x cubed is 1, 2, 5. And hopefully I can immediately see that what I'm asking myself is what number, when I cube it, will give me 125. So the answer is 5, because 5 cubed is 125. If I couldn't immediately get there, I'd have to say, all right, if I want to go from x cubed to x, right, the I've taken the cube root, so I must take the cube root of 125, and my calculator would tell me that that is 5. Okay, what about one like this? 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of x is 18. Well, I want to work out what x is, so let me get this 3 to the power of x by itself, right? So to do that, I must divide the left-hand side by 2, and if I do that to the left, I must do that to the right. So I get then that 3 to the x is equal to 18 over 2 is 9. And so if I've got 3 to the x is equal to 9, remember with my exponential equations, I must get the same base on both sides so I can p compare the exponents. So 9 is the same as 3 squared. So now I can compare the exponents and say x is 2. All right, I want you to try this one. Three times the square root of twenty x is e three times the square root of x is equal to twenty seven. Right? You see if you can solve this equation. Pause the video now and try. Okay, so did you first get that square root of x on its own? So you get square root of x twenty seven over three is nine, and now we want to get back to the x. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply nine by itself right, square root to get 81, right, because what we're asking ourselves is the square root of what will be 9, and it's the square root of 81, that is 9. Okay, we're just going to go back and have a look at some linear equations, um, and just have a look at some things that can go slightly funny in them. So the first one is very, very simple, and you should be able to do it immediately. Remember what you want to do with these sort of things is you want to get all the x's over here and all the numbers over there, right? So we want to be able to get rid of this 3, so we're going to subtract it, right? And so we'll get 2x is equal to x minus 1. And then we want to get rid of the x from this side, so we'll subtract the x from here, we'll subtract it from there. 2x minus x gives me x, and here we'll just have minus 1. So we've solved our equation. We know that x is minus 1. So that was a very simple one that we've been used to all along. Now what happens if we try exactly the same story here? So if we've got x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1, let's just see. Let's go with our process. So we want to get rid of the numbers on the left hand side so we're going to subtract one and so what we'll be left with here is x is equal to x right and now we want to get rid of remember the x is from the right hand side so let's get rid of the x but if we take it off that side we must take it off that side and then we're going to get zero is zero and now actually what can i say right what value yeah what what is my answer i mean i don't know all right except i do know Think of where the question started. The question started to say x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1. So what is that question asking you? It's saying what numbers can you put in in place of x that will make this thing true? So what values, what numbers, if you put them into this equation, will make it true? Now if you think about it, when is x plus 1 going to be exactly the same as x plus 1? Well, the answer to that is, it's always true, right? If you take a number and you add 1 to it, is it going to be exactly the same as taking that number and adding 1 to it? Yeah, doesn't matter which number you start with, if you add 1 to it, it'll be the same as if you add 1 to it, right? It's fairly obvious. And when you get to this thing here, naught equals naught, that's always true, right? So basically, 
When you get to that situation, you can say it's true for any value of x. See? Try it out here. x plus 1 is x plus 1, right? Put in the value of x is 3. Well, is 3 plus 1 equal to 3 plus 1? Yes. Put in the value of x minus 100. Is minus 100 plus 1 the same as minus 100 plus 1? Yes. No matter what value of x you put in here, it's always going to be the same. x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 for any value of x. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at this um, next question here. What happens with this one? Well, if we go and just solve it in the way we always have, we'd subtract 3 and subtract 3. So here we'd get x plus 2 is equal to x. Now we're going to get rid of the x's, so we subtract x, subtract x. And here we'll get 2 is equal to 0. Now this is complete rubbish, right? 2 can never be equal to 0. So what's going on in our equation? Well, again, let's go back and read what the equation says. We started off with x plus 5 being x plus e being equal to x plus 3. The question is, if we take a number and add 5 to it, when will it be equal to taking the number and adding 3 to it? What number is going to make that true? Well, no number is going to make that true. Think about it. If you take any number, so let's take 100, and you add 5 to it, Will it be the same as taking 100 and adding 3 to it? No. Try and think of a number that will make that true. What number, when you add 5 to it, is going to be exactly the same as when you add 3 to it? There is no number that will do that. So in this case, there is no solution. So if we go through our process of solving and we come to a thing where it's rubbish, like saying 2 is the same as 0, we know, well, either we've made a mistake somewhere along the line, or we need to look back at the equation we started with and we should be able to see quite easily that that equation has got no solution, no value of x will make it true.